I'm the very lucky person who works for GNS sites in the volcano monitoring team and part of the monitoring is flying in planes and measuring the sulphur dioxide, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulphide. That these three gases are measured because they're the main gases that come off magma when it's degassing. And these will give us an indication of the, uh, how close the magma is to the surface. So we've been very busy recently. We had the um, two Tongariro eruptions, so we've been doing lots of response flights. There's a lot of ash around and lots of, quite a bit of gas coming out, so we're regularly monitoring Tongariro. Ruapai is another one that we monitor on a regular basis, um, monthly. Um, there's a little bit of, um, it has been a little bit restless, so we've been doing a few response flights to that as well. And uh, we're here at Taupo Airport today. Uh, we're heading to White Island, which showed signs of ash emissions um, on Saturday. So this is a response flight. Normally we'll fly every month, but we're doing a few extra ones because we're showing signs of a little bit of activity. Okay, the plane's been specially modified. Um, we've got a special door that we bought, put a hole in it, and um, this enables us to put our equipment out the door. We have the co-spec and the fly spec which measure sulphur dioxide. These instruments look up and they measure a concentration per metre. Three other instruments are bolted in in a special fashion. Approaching the island there's a nice visible plume um, so it will make our measurements quite easy. We, we fly wind circles to measure the wind speed and the wind direction. We fly with a neutral throttle which means it's only the wind that determines how fast the plane's going. When we go against the wind, the wind slows us down and that's our slower speed. When we go with the wind, it speeds us up and that's our faster speed. So we can calculate um, the, the, the difference and calculate the wind speed. This is all done with the GPS, which also gives us our wind direction. After we've done the wind circles, the next thing is to fly down as low as we can, which is 200 feet. That's as low as we're allowed to fly and we fly it. Right angles, right angles to the wind under the plume. What we've got on the graph here is sulphur dioxide um, concentration as in a ppm per metre, um, and that and it gives us a concentration in the, in the plume, and we factor in the wind speed later to give us the flux. So we fly backwards and forwards, and we do this seven or eight times. After we finish the um, transects for the sulphur dioxide measurements, we have to do a contouring flight which means we have to fly through the plume collecting gas as we go up. It actually sucks gas in through the bottom of the plane into the instrument at different altitudes starting from below the plume where there's nothing, hit the plume and climb 200 feet um, intervals till we get to the plume, uh, top of the plume where we get no gas again. After we finish the gas measurements we go through it for a visual flight, take photos, um, we had a flight here a couple of weeks ago and I'm just interested to see the differences. What we can see today, which is slightly different from two weeks ago, is a vent with a tough cone and a great big hole and there's gas coming out of that, surrounded by a little lakelet. There's also quite a bit of colour brown round which probably indicates a bit of the ash that came out. There's a lot of yellow colour in the crater which is elemental sulphur that's um, precipitated out around the fumaroles. The uh, tough cone from, um, that was created at the end of last year still seems to be there in its, in its normal form. Um, and there's a little bit of dark discoloration in the plume. So I've downloaded the data after coming back to the office um, and starting to do the calculations. These are the, the sulphur dioxide peaks that we got from the co-spec. So you can see as we fly along out of the plume, uh, hit the plume, come up and then down, out of the plume, turn around and come backwards and forwards under the plume and we put these into a spreadsheet and we ended up, ended up with a, um, a flux in ton tonnes per day. Today we got 600 tonnes per day or slightly over um, which is very similar to what we got two weeks ago and in two weeks before that so we're not seeing any huge increases in gas so far um, in response to the ash emission, erupt the ash eruption on the weekend. It's, um, it's no different from the previous flights um, since the end of January.